number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater in New York City. And we're coming to you from the LTV studio where I have a really special guest today, Emma Walton, uh, the daughter of the legendary Julie Andrews, and they've written a new book, Homework. Oh, hi, Patrick. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. Well, I'm delighted to be here, and um, and, and you've yes, written a new book with your mother, homework about her Hollywood years. Yes, and it covers from it covers. Uh, this is the second installment in her memoirs. So she published what the, was the first, first one? one. First one was called Home, and that was uh, published ten years ago. And that cover it was a memoir of her early years, as the subtitle, memoir of my early years. And that covered the time from her birth up until uh, all through her childhood performing in vaudeville in England during the Blitz, during the Second World War, and then coming eventually to New York to perform on Broadway in My Fair Lady and Camelot and The Boyfriend, or first The Boyfriend, and then My Fair Lady and Camelot. And it ended when Walt Disney came backstage at Camelot and offered her the role as Mary Poppins. So that was the end of the first book. That was the one. end of the first book. This book picks up with right her, that, that moment when she lands uh, in Los Angeles to begin work on Mary Poppins and it goes through all of her films in the sort of primary Hollywood years until uh, through the last film that she did with her uh, husband Blake Edwards, my stepfather, and that was a film called That's Life and uh, that was the last film they did together and it was right before she came back to New York and to Broadway to do Victor Victoria. So wow. we figured that was a good stopping point. So you, you, don't, you don't get into Victor Victoria, do you stop We don't. Her. That's for another so you, day. You, you and have another a third book. chapter. You have a third. From your uh, lips to, <laughs> to, uh, to readers' ears, Patrick. Is to say. So now you, you're a, kind of an only child with your, with your father, Tony. I am an only child, although I do have a lot of siblings. Right. It's kind of a paradox, yeah. Um, so but my, where I wanted to go with that. So you, yeah. So through these Hollywood years, you were an only child go traveling with your mother? I was. I have step-siblings. Mm -hmm. So um, my both my parents remarried fairly early on in my childhood, and I inherited a, an older brother and sister from my stepfather and a younger sister from my, from my stepmother. And then my mother and my stepfather adopted two children, and so I have step-siblings and I have half-siblings and um, I have adopted siblings. But technically, I'm the only child of my mother and my father. So I grew up with siblings in the house. Um, and we all, you know, went to the set when mom was working and, and so forth. So but you, th these Hollywood years that she's written about in homework. Was, I was there. You were there. I was there. You, were, were you on every set? Yes, At I one was. Point? Yeah. I do, was. do you have recollections of some of it? Or I do. I mean, uh, not so much of the early, early films, sadly. Not so much of um, Sound of Music and Mary Poppins because I was very small. Um, and even the first few films, Santa Music, Mary Poppins, The Americanization of Emily, Hawaii, those films were all made before I was three. And so... That's what I thought. That's yeah. So I was, I was very small and I don't really have much memory of, you know, a flash here and yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but from... But you have pictures of you on the sets and things like pictures. that too? There's some yeah. in the book, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a very sweet picture, a couple of sweet pictures in the book, but there's one of mom uh, as Maria in her nun's habit holding me as a baby and, and just sort of nose to nose as a baby. It's very sweet. There's some lovely pictures in the book, actually. L let's show the audience the cover of the book. I think we have a poster Great. of the book. Yeah. I love that Isn't photograph. That beautiful? Yep. You said that's a Burt Stern? That is a Burt Stern, the very famous photographer Burt Stern, of course. Who had a so home many. in Sag Harbor. He did, and he did a, you know, so many photos of Marilyn Monroe. And um, I believe this was for a magazine shoot. I can't recall which one. But uh, it's, it's a magnificent picture. And, and we loved it for the cover because it has just enough um, spirit to it. It's, it's not a, it. it is glamorous, but there's just a bit of mischief and twinkle and rumpled hair to suggest that there's... Well, it's glamorous because your mother has a glamorous look, but it really isn't... But it's very, it's it very human, right? Yeah, in any exactly. kind of way. <laughs> so uh, we felt that it, it was a nice reflection of the, um, the candor in the book, you know, in terms of the sort of the gentle must look. 
Mm -hmm. And the book comes out October... October 15th. You can take it down. Uh, yeah. It comes out October 15th. October 15th. And right away, you have stuff, she has stuff, both both you people are going to go on a book tour, is that We right? are, yes. We're actually, there's quite a bit of, uh, of pu pu publicity and promotional events lined up, so. I can only that, imagine. Yeah, that well, first know, before week. We go, before we go to the tour, I just want to show, we have also have a lovely picture of the two of you. I just oh. want to show that real yeah, quick. Yeah, by it's all so means. pretty. Is, we it, are. is that in the book, too? That is not in the book, because okay. uh, that was, that of course is after, when the book ends, I was quite a bit younger than that. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when the book ends, just before she came back to uh, to Broadway, so. Um, so this is just before Victoria, Victoria. This this picture was taken when we started writing together, okay. and that's more. That's about twenty years ago. All right, so. take the picture down. Yeah. You opened up a halt when you started writing together. Yeah. Now we have to tell the audience. You guys have written over thirty over books? thirty books together now. Thirty children's yeah, books, mostly and for children. Of course which we'll get around to later in writing. I do, books I do, I teach writing. At, at, which, I don't know how anybody teaches because I have no patience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually love teaching. I find that I've learned more from teaching than all the years I studied, yeah, you know, every so. Every teacher tells me that. Yeah, and I used to teach, my, my background was in theater, and my husband and I, uh, as you know, started Bay Street Theater here in Sag Harbor almost 30 years ago, and um, so I used to teach acting, and I used to teach playwriting, um, particularly at acting to adults, but playwriting to high school and middle school students. And, um, you know, dramatic writing is dramatic writing, whether you're writing for the stage or the screen or the memoir or a children's book. It's still three acts, you know, and it's still a beginning, a middle, and an end, and there's still a dramatic narrative. So it, that really prepared me very well, I think, for so this, for this particular work. book you edited too, your mother's book, right? You're the editor of it. Um, actually, uh, the first book I edited with her. Okay. Um, this book, I we had a we had a wonderful editor. Actually, we had a wonderful editor on both the same editor on both books, Leslie Wells, who lives in East Hampton, as a matter of fact. Um, but this book, I was her co-author. I was her co-collaborator. Oh, so you wrote it? So yeah, wrote so I wrote it with her. Too. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, that. no, no, that's fine. And actually, I mean, my job in writing it, we did this on the first book as well, but in this book, I get credit for it, um, which is lovely. And it's, it's a function of kind of organizing the writing process in such a way that she can tell her story as easily as possible. So what I did was I made, I started out by making a big timeline of her life and um, you know all the sort of major professional points each year and other things, moves to different houses or children arriving or you know new where schools do, where or whatever. Draw, where do you draw? Where do you find all the, the, the facts? Well, she from? was. Does she, what does she do to keep? Yeah. She was and is an immaculate um, diary keeper. So, uh, in the first few years of Victor Victor, oh not Victor Victor, the first few so years of did, an immaculate diary keeper does it mean every morning and evening or just once um, a day. Well, she, she, first of all, she has date books every single year with like well, everything, everything recorded. So she's very specific. But at a certain point in her life, right around the time that she and my father were separating, she started also keeping a journal. And in the beginning, it was journals. That's healing. You know, it's very healing. Very healing. And in the beginning, it was usually around a project, like a film or a vacation or an event. You know, it would be the diary of a Christmas vacation or the diary of a film project. And, um, and eventually, it became a daily practice. And so part of my job after creating this timeline from all of her date books was to read all of her diaries and then to flag sections that... Would you know, let anybody else read her diaries but you? I bet not. I don't think so, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, do, anyways, you, do you get a lot of surprises when you read her diaries? Well, you know what was surprising? I'll tell you what was... It was quite funny, actually, because we both thought well, this is going to be a piece of cake because we've got all these diaries, so we can just turn to the diary and, and it'll be there. But of course... You know, if you think about it, I don't know if you've ever kept a journal. I do keep a journal. You do yes. keep a journal. So you don't necessarily record things like what's going on in the world at the time. or you, You're recording like what you dreamt last night or what you ate for dinner. Mostly what or, you feel. Or, or what you feel, <laughs> exactly. And so I, you know, I thought I was going to get all of these sort of details about the day-to-day -day events on the set or the day-to-day -day events in the world that was affecting her life. And instead, what we found was a lot of meals and a lot of dreams. And not, not that there isn't, of course, that material as well. But but you know, there were plenty of moments when I would say to her, you know, Mom, <laughs> you didn't even mention the, the lunar landing happened this day, you know. <laughs> so, so, you, so you had to go back to the timeline of history that's to right. see what was really so happening. So it was a balancing <laughs> act, exactly. But we do, we, we excerpt her diaries a lot in the book. And um, we, you know, we of course interviewed, I interviewed her 
many, many, many hours of us just talking to each other and me. When you of, interview her, do you put it on tape? Or you yes. Just, yeah. Mm. We and put then it on you tape go back and, and we, listen to it afterwards too? Well, we have it transcribed actually. So oh. she has a wonderful assistant who did this for the first book as well. Oh, and cool. Yeah. So she would listen to the interviews and transcribe everything. Um, you know, and you, then you both reread them, And right? then we both, then I take the transcript and kind of convert it into a rough form of narrative and then we both reread it and edit it together. And, uh, and then, of course, we interviewed other people as well. We interviewed the rest of the family in terms of their memories. We interviewed my father. We interviewed her siblings. We, you know, lots and lots of other friends and family members to make sure we had our facts right. Because oh. um, memory is an interesting thing. It doesn't always... No, because I was, was going to ask you, one of the things I was going to ask you, and I kind of shied away from it, like when you, when you were reading her diaries, like well, she's probably never... You've never read them before. This is probably the no. first time. No, yes. But also, does she remember all the stuff? That's what I was going to ask. No, ask that was the fascinating thing. So we would... Because there's so much you can't... There's so much. And we, she would say to me something like, oh, well, when we get to such and such, you'll see it's, it's very funny, you know. And I would have read ahead, and I would say, well, actually, Mom, that's not how it happened. It, you know, it wasn't in the dressing room. It was outside or whatever. And she'd be <laughs> like, no, it wasn't. <coughs> and then we'd get to the diary entry, and... Uh, you know, it would be completely contradictory to the way to she, she remembered, remembered it. it. Yeah, so it was fascinating. I think it's uh, that, that makes a comment about all of us that we want to remember things in a, in the way that we remember them. Exactly. Sometimes instead of exactly how they ha whatever serves us in that particular moment. Right. Um, yeah. To and so that was challenging for her because there was you know there were obviously it's a lot of her life represented here and there were some, um, in, you know it was a time of tremendous success on the one level, but there were also some tremendous underneath challenges the, and there's struggles. A lot of yeah. Struggles going on. And revisiting all of that in her diaries and reliving it all was, was a challenge for her and for both of us to kind of walk through together. So it was a great honor to it is continues to be a great honor. Now to there work was something else that. happening the first week. I forgot what it was. The, the first oh yeah. So the first week uh, the book comes out October fifteenth and we'll be doing a lot of media in New York that week. Right. Um, and at the end of the week, on the weekend, we're doing um, we're doing a talk at the 92nd oh, Street that's Y. It, yes. Oh, who's going to do the interview? That's um, Annette Insdorf, who mm -hmm. is a great film historian, and uh, coincidentally, my son's teacher at Columbia University. Because oh, oh, cool. yeah, he did uh, film studies there, and she is was that his what favorite he's teacher. Yeah, he's he's graduated now, but that was his his. Uh, so study. he's a filmmaker. He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so we're doing that on Friday the 19th at the 92nd Street Y. And that same weekend, um, Mom is uh, presenting a series of films that she curated of her husband, of Blake oh. Edwards films, at the Metrograph in New York City. Where so, is the um, Metrograph? The Metrograph is downtown in New York. It's, um, it's kind of a, it's a new classic cinema in, in that they have, they, they show, um, films in their original format in 16 millimeter or, or 33 millimeter and they, they do these great events and talkbacks and presentations and it's a real cinema center where it's small mm -hmm. um, but there's a restaurant associated you know with address, it. And there's a, I don't know the address okay. by heart. But, but I, what's I, the name of it again? Metrograph. Metrograph. And the, the Metrograph. The, and yeah. when, when are they going to show these films? Uh, sat, well it's, it's a whole series and it oh. goes on for a little while what's, but, but you know it launches on um, Saturday the 19th. So Saturday the 19th. Saturday and Sunday and are the two. For a couple weeks, you yeah, think? It exactly. goes for a couple. Oh, and it's yeah. all the films of Blake Edwards that your mother. Not all the films, but no, no, the ones but all that the she's ones that she's, the ones yeah. that she's chosen yeah. for, for her, her favorites. <laughs> and her of course, we, in case films. our audience doesn't know, they were married. They were married. <laughs> and they did exactly, a lot of projects yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, and this and and incidentally, this um, this event was uh, coordinated and organized by um, Julia Daniela Valan, who is uh, another wonderful film historian who will be, and already is actually, the artistic director of the new Sag Harbor Cinema. Oh, so, how yeah, cool. Yeah, so she, and she was, uh, my mom just was honored at the Venice Film Festival, and Julia was the one who presented that award and, and organized that for For Venice, a lifetime so achievement? For a lifetime achievement. And when yeah. we were talking just a minute, your mother is also a dame. Uh, she was honored she by is England, is by the Queen of England. Yeah, she was but indeed. she doesn't, we were talking, she doesn't really like to be called a dame. She's a little shy about it, it's funny. She just prefers to be called Julie or Jules, as those of us who, you know, no, I, I call her mom, I, but. That, I said earlier that your mother's essence is not showy. It's, yeah, it's no. quiet. It's I, true. I, she didn't want to flaunt it. Not at all. No, <laughs> she's she's very shy about it. I mean, she's enormously honored and thrilled oh, to course. have received that honor, but she doesn't she doesn't feel comfortable being referred to as Dame Julie. But she went and got it, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I was there. You were. I was there with her. Yeah, that was quite a day. Well, who, who else got it that year? 
Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, yeah, she was the the one the other major figure there that that year. But there are hundreds and hundreds of people I know, who get I know, honored I know. the same day. It was quite an astonishing ceremony. So, how did you two get together writing children's books? How uh, did that happen? Well, what so was the motivation? My mother started writing children's books when I was a child in the seventies. Um, and she, she basically had always been a, a terrific reader and had always loved writing stories when she was a child. Um, when she was touring in vaudeville, she would write stories to amuse herself and her tutor. Um, was this a form of release? Yeah, a form of, yeah, exactly. Because and her tutor would allow her to, like, if you finish your math, you can write a story kind okay. of thing, you know. And um, so she, she, as a, I mean, she was very lonely because she was touring a lot and she wasn't in school. And, and so you have to work. It's hard work. You have work. to work. So books were her company and her solace. And, um, and she loved to write stories as well. Dissolve in the 70s. Um, she was working on a film called Darling Lily with Blake, and they had just gotten together. They weren't even married yet. And uh, my stepsister and my stepbrother were with us, and we were spending the summer with them while they were shooting in Europe. And we apparently were um, quite, we were terrors, you know, we were quite messy. <laughs> you and weren't we were good girls. We weren't, yeah, no, my, my, my siblings and I, we were like not very good about brushing our teeth or cleaning our room or any you of that stuff. You were young, what yeah, do you expect? Exactly. <laughs> so my mom set up this game of like, if you do this and you, if you brush your teeth and you pick up your clothes and you, you know, tie, uh, make your bed and all of this, you know, you can win a prize. And if you don't, or if you forget, you have to pay a forfeit. And my stepsister, my older stepsister, Jennifer said, well, you have to play too. And my mom said, sure, okay, what do I have to do? And she said, you have to stop swearing. You, she swears a lot? My mother <laughs> swears a lot. So, um, so, of course, she was the first to lose. And because she couldn't stop swearing? <laughs> she couldn't stop swearing. <laughs> and she said, all right, all right, what's my forfeit? And Jennifer said, write me a story. And so that story that she wrote for my sister became her first published children's book. And that was a book called Mandy, which was published in the 70s. And then she wrote another book after that called The Last of the Really Great Wang Doodles. And those two books, I'm happy to say, are still in print. And um, she published them under the name of Edwards, her married name, um, rather than Andrews, because she didn't want to, she just wanted the, the writing to speak for itself if it was any good. And, you know, she, and, which and is they what, did. Which is really c very courageous. It because really was. I mean, because as Julie Andrews, you know they're going to be a hit. And as Edwards, they might flop. Well, so there, she, she's often credited with being the first sort of celebrity author, if children's author, anyway. Um, but she, you know, she took it very, but very seriously. But is she the first one to go to use a pseudonym too? Probably, yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago. Anyway, um, because years I think later, most people like to flaunt their. I mean, you, most people are the opposite yeah, of what your mother she's, presents. She's, in she's the pretty. Essence. She's a good egg that way. Um, You're really lucky to have such a. Uh, I am. I am. But years later, she was asked. Uh, she, they were talking about, oh, that years later she wrote two chapter books about a little cat, um, a ship's cat, actually. And, and with that same publisher, Hyperion, she was uh, working on her first memoir. And they said, have you ever written anything for younger children? Would you consider writing a picture book for very young children? And at the time, my son was just a year old. Oh, how perfect. And um, it was perfect. And she said to me, gosh, I, I wouldn't know where to begin to, to write for very, very young children. Like, what would, what would you want for Sam if you could find any book? you know, that, that would be the perfect thing for him. And he was, um, and still is, a complete truck freak. Like he just only wanted to read books about, and, trucks. about trucks and play with toys that were trucks and wear pajamas that had trucks on them and sleep on sheets that had, like it was trucks, trucks, trucks all the time. Uh, now it's classic cars and <laughs> He's evolved. He has, up. Yeah, he has, he has. He drives a Mustang. It's very cool. Uh, that was my first car. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a '66 Mustang. He restored himself. It's great. But anyway, um, I said, I, you know, that I would love to have like a series about trucks that had some value to it. So it was character driven, had some thematic value and so forth. But um, they're kind of few and far between. Between most of them are nonfiction and so forth. She said, Well, let's write it together. So, that's, so that was the first book you that wrote? That was the first was book we wrote together. It was called Dumpy the Dump Truck. And it was the first in a series of books about that character, Dumpy, and other trucks on the farm. And it was sort of, it's set in a town that's modeled after Sag Harbor. And my father did the illustrations. And, Tony? Um, yeah. Oh, how cool. Yeah, we love your father. He's so, you. how, is, how is he, by the way? He's good, thank oh, good, good. you. Barry was just asking about him. Yeah, yeah. Day, yeah. He's, he's very, well, he's fierce. <laughs> <laughs> he's my, uh, my father, for, for viewers who don't know, is, is a Broadway production designer and uh, did the sets and costumes for, my, for Mary Poppins and for 
many shows on Broadway, but he's also an illustrator, and so he did the illustrations for those books. And then from there, he's we just kept going. He's also a very generous spirit, too. He is. He's, he's very much... You have two really cool parents. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think so, too. Yeah. But I'm a little biased. So. <laughs> you can So, be. yeah, so 30 books, 30-some 30 books later, we've written a number of picture books. We've got a series about um, called The Very Fairy Princess, about a little girl who... Uh, just is convinced she's I, a very I, princess. I have some stuff here. Well, oh. Let me see if I can. I, I try not to bring up paper, but that's okay. Uh, we have the very fairy princess, which is a number one New York Times best seller. Yeah. Uh, the dumpy, the dump truck we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Simon's gift. Simeon's gift. Simeon's, Simeon's oh, gift. Oh, I'm sorry. Simeon's yeah, gift. Yeah. There's a there's a lovely story about that actually, in which um, which is that that's based on a story that we wrote together when I was five. And my, uh, my parents had separated and were living on separate coasts, or had divorced, actually. Which was hard. Was that hard for you? Which was hard, yeah. and because um, and I was traveling back and forth between the two a lot. And so my mom had, fortunately, they were childhood sweethearts, and so they remained very good friends. And to this day, they are very, very good friends. And I um, can't imagine those two people wouldn't do it any other way. Yeah, <laughs> that, I mean, they worked hard at it, but, it, but they really... Uh, but that's who they it are. It was important to them. They work hard at stuff. Both yeah, of them do. Yeah, they do. Um, but anyway, my mom had this idea that if she and I wrote a story together and I brought it to my father to illustrate, and he illustrated it, then she could have it bound and I would have this memento that would make me feel like we were still a family in, in some way. And, um, Instead and of so, launched a career. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, after we wrote Dumpy the Dump Truck and, and many of the books in that series, we went back and I found this beautiful old bound book that my mom had made for me of of Simeon's gift. It was had a different title then. And we were looking at it what together and we then? thought it was called Charlie the Englishman. And uh, and so we thought, well maybe we can You could subtitle mm, it that almost. Yeah, really. <laughs> maybe we can rewrite it and maybe, you know, we could see if it has life it could be published. And so we did. We re rewrote it. Charlie became Simeon. And um, but that one part of the book that we wrote when I was five is is still about a third of the book now that's published. And later, we uh, had the great good fortune to adapt it for the stage and for the symphony. Um, it's a book about music, and uh, the story follows this young musician as he's a minstrel, actually, as he's going in search of his muse. And we performed it at Bay Street. And then, when did you do um, that? I didn't know. I didn't miss this and didn't know about it. Yeah, this was um, like 2000. Two, three, early or in the early two thousands, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it went. Did you it do got, a, a full run? Um, it was a workshop run. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was it was two pianos, and um, but it was a full cast, and we did a couple of we did several performances, and then it went out on to a symphonic tour, and we had the extraordinary gift of hearing it played um, by a full orchestra of eighty eight pieces, and um, mom toured with it to a couple of different venues and did the narration for it, and uh, so that was quite an experience um, to see it, you know, adapted for the stage and for symphony. And then we wrote a couple of middle grade novels together and, um, and now these memoirs. Wow. Now, we have what, you, you, you've, you've done so much stuff. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. <laughs> and we didn't even get to your, uh, yet to your teaching. But I, I, first I want to show the audience just the schedule of the tour. You're sure, gonna, absolutely. You, the book is going to go on a tour. Can we, this yes. is a tour. Now where, what's the website if they want to check this out further? Okay, great. So julieandrewscollection.com Julie is our Andrews website. julieandrewscollection.com yeah. is the website. You can go there and find these tour dates if you want to meet Julie talking about her book. Yeah, and, and you're gonna there's go a on calendar the tour. there you're, as you're well. Going on the tour for a lot too. I am. I'm going on most of these events with her. I won't be in Los Angeles or Chicago, but I'll be everywhere else uh, with her, and uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, these are these are actually um, just the venues where she's presenting and doing speaking engagements, mm -hmm. and then of course there will be a good deal of publicity and press and television and radio and, and so forth. So. Now, now we only have a few minutes left, but yep. you know, tell us a little bit about this. Is you just right? Oh, just write for kids. Yeah, you, you teach you teach writing for kids. I do. I teach writing. Actually, primarily, I teach writing at Stony Brook, um, at Stony Brook University on the Southampton campus. I, I'm now, on is the there a website that people can go and learn more about you than this? Is it, absolutely. Well, tell there's the my website, which is emmawaltonhamilton.com, and uh, and then of course uh, there all the courses at Stony Brook are on Stony Brook's website, which is stonybrook.edu. Um, but if you want specifically to know about the children's lit programs, stonybrook.edu forward slash children's lit. 
And uh, so there I teach for the MFA and I teach children's writing for the master's program there. When did you start doing that? Um, in 2008. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've been there a while. And um, how, how many classes do you teach? Dep it depends on the year. Okay. So, um, like this year? So, well, I, I, I do various different things. So this year I'll be teaching, uh, my, the main course I'll be teaching will be in the spring. Um, but I also run the Children's Lit Fellows Program, oh, which wow. is a certificate program where I have 12 students a year and then some alums doing postgraduate work that I, um, that I supervise uh, as they are mentored by other faculty members in finishing their books, their oh. picture books and their novels and so forth. And then I also run the Children's Lit Conference there in the summertime um, where we have workshops in, in writing for children, picture book, middle grade and young adult. So that's at Stony Brook's Southampton campus, but I also teach online, and those are my courses, Just Write for Kids, Just Write Children's Books. Um, so those are independent study courses that you can just sign up for and work your way through independently. Um, and then I'm part of uh, another online, uh, several other different online education programs, but um, there's a conference called Picture Book Summit coming up wow. on October 5th that I'm one of the co-founders of. So. It's all quite extraordinary. <laughs> you, you and your mother have created quite a legacy. Yes, uh, well, you do what you have to do, Patrick. I right? think you do what you want. You do what you have to do. And you do what you want to do, of course. You do what you do what is in your heart and what you're interested in. And I love writing and I love I love writing and I love the arts and so it all kind of dovetails together very nicely. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We're about out of time. We have about 30 seconds. Thank you uh, for having I, me. I look forward to reading your mother's book. I can't I, I she's we're a big fan of hers. Oh, and thank I, you so I much. loved her in Victoria, Victoria, Victor Victoria yeah, on Broadway. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's the, movie the next was, book. The movie right. was good too. But the movie's <laughs> good too. Yeah. But she was wonderful. Did oh. she win the Tony Award for that? She did. She was nominated, but she, didn't but she, she deserved it. Right? She, uh, she actually um, refused the nomination that oh. year because she was the only member of the company that was nominated and oh, she I felt it was that unfair. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So she, um, she coined she the phrase. She probably would have won otherwise. I like to think so. I, I like to think, think she'd so be too. an EGOT. She'd be an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winner. It wasn't but important to her. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thanks, Patrick, for having me.